Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to continue our Basics with Godot tutorial series where I take you from knowing nothing about Godot to understanding pretty much everything inside of Godot. And today we're going to be talking about CSG meshes. So we're going to talk about what a CSG mesh is. We're going to build a small level with the CSG mesh, and we're going to go ahead and export out a CSG mesh to Blender for further processing. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open up a 3D scene. I'm gonna right click here, add in a child note, and you can see that we have a bunch of different CSGs. If we go ahead and search it, you'll see that we have a bunch of different CSGs here. So we'll go ahead and add in a box. Now you'll see on the right, there is a bunch of different things here. So you have like width, height, depth, material, inverted faces, an operation you have snap you have calculate tangents you have collision i know that there's a lot there but let's go through and make it pretty you know it'll make sense really quick so what is width well it adjusts the width of the object right so we'll just set this to something like 20. what's the height it's the height of the object so we'll set that to three and the depth will also set that to something like 18. so we're making a pretty big room here but you know, it, that's okay. Inverted faces, if we invert the faces, you can see that it's a, it's basically a room now, right? If we shut that off, now it's a, a square, it's an object. Operation, union, intersection, and subtraction, you can see that really doesn't do anything yet, and that's because we haven't set up our other objects. Snap is the uh, percentage of snapping that the vertexes do when they do their boolean operation calculate tangents calculates the tangents or not or like the normals if that makes sense and use collision will allow you to use your object as a collision object so if we go ahead and we control duplicate the csg object and we grab this little um button here we can pull this in and we can go ahead and grab this one and we can also pull it in. Awesome. Now, if we go ahead and we go to our operators and we choose subtraction, you'll notice nothing happens. Now, why is that? That's because Godot treats CSG objects as separate objects unless you combine them. So if we go ahead and we right click on here and we go to add child node and we use CSG combiner, and we click create and we drag these two and we put them underneath each other you'll see suddenly it pulls out that geometry in accordance to this how this object is is he is defined so if i pull this object up you'll see suddenly i have a floor and that's because i'm subtracting this object from this object to create this new object here. Now, something to know about CSG objects is order of operators matters. And what I mean by that is if I go ahead and I add in a child node and I add in a box, you'll see that the box exists even though I have a subtraction operator here. This box exists. But if I drag this box above box two, it's suddenly gone. So it goes from the top down. So it has your box, it subtracts or in this case, it adds your box and then it subtracts your box. If I put this below it, now the box exists. So it has, has your box, subtracts your box, and then adds this new box, if that makes sense. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a quick little level. It'll probably take a few seconds to kind of whip something together, and then we'll go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and make this a subtraction so we'll go operation subtraction. We're gonna use this to go ahead and make a small door. So we'll drag this over here and we'll cut a hole here. Great, and we'll pull this down and we'll make it a little bit bigger and you'll see that we're cutting through our floor. So we'll pull this up a tiny bit. So we're no longer cutting through our floor. There we go. And now we've got ourselves a little tiny box or a little tiny hole here. So now on the other side, we're going to go ahead and just duplicate this whole CSG object and we're just going to bring it over here and you'll see that our operators are not affecting each other 
because these two combiners are separate. So if I rotate this by 90 degrees and I drag this over here, something like this, and then I go ahead and I select my box and I make it a bit smaller. And then I go ahead and I select my other box and I make that a bit smaller. You'll see that now I have a small hallway for my character to run down, see? So now I can go ahead and I can grab this box and I can control duplicate it and I can pull it all the way down here to cut out another hole. And you can kind of see exactly what I'm tell what I was saying earlier with how powerful CSG meshes really can be, right? You can take this object and let's kind of drag this over just a tiny bit to kind of link these two up. There we go. And you can see just how powerful this little system can be for level prototyping. Now, what are some other operations that we're allowed, right? Well, if we right click and we add a child node, we can go ahead and add in a child polygon node here, or we can add in a CSG polygon node. And you can see that this gives me four little points that I can move around and it'll let me custom build an object. But if we come over here, you can notice that I have some special operators here. And one of them is the ability, if I click on this, to have multiple vertices to work with. So if I click on this and I go five and I come down here and I click and I drag, you'll see that now I've got a fifth vertex to work with. So I can create something kind of complicated like this. See? So that's kind of the power of CSG meshes. Now, one of the other really cool features of the CSG polygon is I can go ahead and I click and change from depth to spin and now suddenly I have a cylindrical object that I can adjust and change. So if I, you know, if I go, oh, you know, the cylinder needs to have a little bit, you know, I need to have kind of a point to it, right? I could do something like this. So you could do some basic modeling with this if you were to make something like, a, like for instance, if I were to grab this object and I were to move it off into the distance, let's say, something like over here. And I were to grab another CSG polygon and I were to add a cylinder here. And let's scale that down a tiny bit. And then let's pull the CSG object up. Something like that. Now I suddenly have a tower off in the distance, right? So when the player spawns in, they'd see this little tower off in the distance. It's so far away that the user's not going to see it or they're not going to be able to to um, make out any details. So the CSG polygon is perfect for this, right? One of the other really cool things about the CSG polygon is the ability to add materials to these objects. Now, one of the bad things, I guess we're going to say bad and good about CSG objects is the materials affect the box. So, and you can't affect just one individual wall out of a box. You have to affect the whole box. So for instance, if I go ahead and we add a material here, so let's go ahead and add a spatial material and let's come out to this little box here and we add in a texture, right? And we drag our color texture in here. You'll see that it only affected the outside of the box, not the inside. Why is that? Because when this gets put in so this box inherits this box's data if that makes sense it'll probably make more sense if i go ahead and i add in a spatial material and i go ahead and make this a blue color there we go you'll see that it doesn't affect this box it affects this box so that's one thing to keep in mind one other thing to keep in mind is if you go ahead and you add in this texture here and let's go ahead and make this white so that it just kind of matches you'll notice that the texture scaling on this is not great and you'll notice that this is all borked out right it's all messed up well what we can do to get around that is if we go to uvs and we come down here and we do triplanar that suddenly fixes that issue right now the textures are the correct size and everything seems okay but again you'll notice that this wall and this wall and these floors are all the exact same texture 
So I really don't suggest using this to build out production level objects. I would just use it for something small like background assets or level prototyping. Now that we've gone through the basics of what CSGs are for, let's go ahead and add in a small character controller to kind of run around this, this environment that we created. So we're going to go ahead and go to the asset library. We're going to go ahead and download FPS and it should come up with a first person controller. So let's go ahead and just download that. If somebody else has already built it. There's no reason for me to build it. So let's go ahead and drag this little player in to our scene. So if we go back to 3D and we drag this little player in. Uh, see, it added it, but it added it under here. There we go. So we'll drag this outside of here into our spatial and we'll drag this up. Awesome. So one of the things that you'll notice is if we go ahead and we try to play this and actually I need to save my scene. So let's call this tutorial CSG scene. And we're going to go ahead and select that as our scene and we're going to hit play. You'll notice suddenly the player just falls through the floor. That doesn't work, right? Well, that's because we need to have collision on our floor. So one of the big things that we need to do is we need to select our CSG box and we need to turn on collision. So if we select our CSG box up here and we look for it, you'll notice that I don't see any collision, right? That's because we need to go to our CSG combiner and inside of our combiner, we can turn on collision. So now if we have collision on, our player can now land and run around on our object. Which is great. But if we run through here, this also doesn't have collision. So we're going to need to go ahead and add collision to this object as well. There we go. So now you can see that we have a small level prototype that we can use to kind of demo out our game and, and see how it feels. Oh, is it okay if this wall's here? Is it okay if this wall's over here? You know, it, it gives you a lot of extra space to work with and prototype out your levels before you start building them in a, in a modeling program like Blender. So what if we're happy with this and we're ready to go ahead and export all this out to use inside of something like Blender or Autodesk Maya or Max? What we could do is we can go to our asset library and go ahead and search export. And you'll see that you have a bunch of different options here. You have like the minimal wave exporter, at docs exporter export categories, and then you have the CSG mesh exporter. Let's go ahead and click on that one and download it. So you'll see it says success. So let's go ahead and install it and let's go ahead and install it. So now that we have this installed, let's go ahead and go up to our project, project settings, go to plugins, and then you'll see that we have a plugin right here. Let's go ahead and enable it and then hit close. So now that we have it enabled, let's go ahead and click on the CSG combiner and then go ahead and click export CSG mesh to OBJ. So if you go ahead and click on that, you get to choose where you want to put it. So we'll just call it our room one, we'll say, and we will go ahead and save that. And now if we actually open up Blender, in my case, I'm using Blender, but you can use whatever program you'd like. And we hit file, import OBJ. And we go out to our project location, which in our case is CSG demo project. And then we pull in our room one OBJ. You'll see that that's our room that we built for our project. Now, what if we want to export all of this out as one object? What we can do is we can right click here, add in a child node, add in a CSG combiner, and then we can take our objects and put them as sub objects underneath our CSG combiner. And once they're all under our CSG combiner, we can once again export mesh to OBJ and pick our room 
And then if we tab back over to Blender and we go file import OBJ, and we, oops, I imported the wrong thing, and file import OBJ here, and we open up our room, you'll see that it has all of our stuff that we exported. So that's how you get your CSGs out from Godot to Blender. So that way you can further process and build and, and create your level for your project. So that's all I have for you guys today. We talked about what a CSG mesh is. It's basically an object that's used to prototype out levels. We talked about textures and materials with CSG meshes and their limitations. We talked about how to get collision with your CSG meshes. And finally, we talked about how to export out CSG meshes so that we could take them into a 3D engine for processing to make it to actual geometry. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And hey, you know, if you dislike this video, hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. This video was a viewer suggestion, so I do listen to you guys and I want you guys to uh, give me your suggestions and give me your video ideas. If you have any ideas, just throw them in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to take a look at them and, and make a video of it in the future. So anyway, guys, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.